Unlike the other biogeochemical cycles, the phosphorus cycle circulates through the Earth's rocks, water, soil, organisms, and sediments. Specifically, it moves throughout the lithosphere and hydrosphere. Phosphorus does not go through an atmospheric phase in a gaseous state because it is usually solid at a normal temperature and pressure. The phosphorus cycle will go through the animals and the plants a lot faster compared to land, sediments, living organisms, soil, and water, which is a slower progress. Due to how slow it goes, the phosphorus cycle is the slowest biogeochemical cycle. The cycle of phosphorus. 1. When there is weathering and erosion, the major reservoir of phosphorus, which is rocks, will release phosphate ions and other molecules. The phosphorus cycle only forms phosphate ions throughout the whole process. 2. Inorganic phosphate is distributed in the soils and the water. 3. As a vital nutrient, plants will absorb the phosphate that is in the soil. 4. Animals will consume these plants, transferring phosphate into their system. 5. While inside the organism, phosphate will be incorporated into organic molecules of phosphate to be used as DNA, RNA, ATP, and ADP. 6. The animal will eventually die going off into decay. While decomposing, the organic molecules of phosphate will return back into the soil and go through mineralization. Mineralization is when bacteria will convert organic molecules of phosphate back into its inorganic form. 7. The inorganic molecules of phosphate will go back into the soil and be reabsorbed by plants again, thus creating the first cycle of the phosphorus cycle. 8. The second cycle is that after weathering and erosion, phosphate ions can end up in the oceans through runoff and eventually go through absorption, consumption, decomposition, and sedimentation. It could also go into the oceans through leaching. Leaching is a process where water-soluble substances are washed out of the soil or waste products that goes into the rivers where it may pollute the water. 9. After sedimentation, there is a possibility that the phosphate ions will go back into the cycle with a geological uplift. To go through all of the stages of the phosphorus cycle again, the first cycle first goes through weathering or erosion, releasing phosphate ions leading to absorption of the phosphate ions by the plants through their roots. Plants will eventually go through consumption by animals where the phosphate ions will be transferred to the animal. The last stage will be decomposition of the animal, releasing the phosphate ions back into the soil through mineralization. The key driving forces of the first cycle is water, wind, or ice to cause weathering or erosion because without this first step, there will be no phosphate ions to transfer in the cycle. Bacteria and mineralization is also a key driving force because it converts phosphate ions from the decomposed animal back into the soil which cycles the whole process all over again. The stages of the second cycle first goes through weathering or erosion to release phosphate ions that are carried away by runoff or possible leaching into the oceans. Absorption will occur within the water plants which will be consumed by water animals and then decompose later on. The phosphate ions will go through sedimentation where a majority of the phosphate ions will stay at the bottom of the ocean and get lost from the world, but have a possible recovery from a geological uplift. The key driving forces of the second cycle of phosphorus is water, wind, or ice to cause weathering or erosion because the rocks mainly create the phosphate ions. Another key driving force is the sun, because if the sun ray reaches the bottom of the ocean where sediments are, then it is possible for geological uplift to occur and the whole process will cycle. Human impact. Eutrophication, aka hypertrophication, is when the phosphorus cycle is affected by humans by the use of fertilizers, raising livestock like hogs, and dumping detergents that contain phosphate ions into the oceans. Fertilizers in hog feces contain high amounts of phosphate and will be distributed into the lakes, rivers, or oceans through runoff. Eutrophication will cause algal blooms, which is a rapid production of algae. When the algae die, bacteria will consume it, which requires large amounts of oxygen. This will create hypoxia. Hypoxia is when large amounts of oxygen will deplete the amount of oxygen in the water, which will cause fish and other organisms to die from lack of oxygen. Some solutions that were attempted to be made was to reduce the amount of phosphorus in the water by creating filtrating systems and in the 1990s, phosphorus was taken out of detergents. Connections, carbon cycle and oxygen cycle. An excessive amount of phosphate in the lakes, rivers and oceans may disrupt the carbon cycle by reacting with bicarbonate ions which will increase the pH level. It will also affect the oxygen cycle. Water cycle. 
Water in the lakes, rivers, and oceans will evaporate due to heat from the sun. During this process, if the sun rays hit the sediments at the bottom of the ocean, geological uplift may occur. Nitrogen cycle. Plants contain nitrogen and phosphorus, which both help in the growth of a plant. Well, that concludes our lesson about the phosphorus cycle today. Thanks for watching.